Hello, good morning, and welcome back to City Line with me. I have Tacoma Opera in the house. If you know me, you know how much I love opera. It's up there with like ribeye steak and pasta, okay? It's just like they all kind of go hand in hand. So please join me in welcoming Mr. Noel Corrin. You are the general director of Tacoma Opera. That is correct. I love it when you are on the comfy couch. Whoa. I don't get to see enough of you. Um, and I love that you remember to always come back here and let me like just be a part of your world for 12 minutes. So thank well, you so much. Well, thank you so much. It's my, my pleasure. Pl my pleasure. This beautiful woman next to you, Allison Pohl. Good morning, Miss Allison. Good morning. You are in the elixir of of love and you uh, play the principal artist Adina. That's right. I cannot wait to talk with you about this because this is a fabulous opera. It really is. Um, this wonderful man, uh, Brendan Tui. Last time I saw you, most beloved man, you were headed into um, Lucretia. Lucretia, and the snow hit. I know. And Lucretia could not go on. We had one performance in the original, and then we. The, that was it, it was snowed out. You and many, many uh, creative performances that weekend. I know that Tacoma Concert Band also uh, got canceled. So I am so happy to see you back here yeah. in the role of Nemorino. That's it. Um, Whoa, look at that. Well, yeah, I'm not going right. to tell you how I know that. Uh. So let's, let's move on on that right. one. So, Noel, let's talk yes. about, uh, as I often say, Tacoma is always adding more people. I mean, look around us, this yeah. city is just booming. So it's not gonna come as any surprise if someone goes, wait a minute, Tacoma has an opera? <laughs> what do we say to that? Well, the opera's been around for 52 years. Yeah, hello. I know, and, and it's an institution in the town. It's a great organization and we're very proud. It's very unusual for a city uh, the size of Tacoma to have its own yeah. opera company, and it's, it's we're blessed. We're blessed to have a company like Tacoma Opera, and I'm I'm blessed to be part of that company. Absolutely, we were talking as you sat down um, that you um, you have a, a very interesting role because you are general director, which you get to run all of the air traffic up here, and then you get to stage direct a couple times yeah. a year. Um, and that's what you love to do, don't you? It's well, that is my expertise. Yes. Yeah. I've been uh, directing now for almost uh, 25 years. I love that. And uh, before that, I was actually an opera singer in Europe. And so, uh, but, you know, I... I decided I would rather uh, stay in the opera for a long time and instead of reaching my limit as a singer. And so I, I switched to directing uh, when I came back to the States and, and I, I've loved doing it ever since. It's really where I belong. I learn something new about you every single time you're in this studio. I love that. Okay, so let's tell the people at home, what is the Elixir of Love about? <laughs> the Elixir of Love is actually one of my all-time favorite comic operas. It's a wonderful comic opera. It's got a lovely story. Um, the, the story is really about these two young people that are sitting next to me who fall in love. Um, and uh, it's a story about a, a farmhand, uh, a very a uh, uh, rustic farmhand yes. who falls in love with the rich farmer's daughter and uh, through a various number of uh, twists and turns and he goes out and buys a, a magic elixir uh, that is really just a bottle of wine and, <laughs> and that helps him he thinks that helps him uh, uh, win the, the heart of his true love. Oh I love this so all right this is a question for both of you um, and let's start with Brandon first. If if I'm new to opera, which I'm not, mm -hmm. but let's say I'm new to opera, will I like Elixir? I, I always tell people this is probably the best first time opera. It's, it's, the music is so beautiful. There's just tunes throughout, some really famous ones that you'll yes. recognize. Mm -hmm. and, um, and the story, it's so charming and I, I just think audiences will love this production, love this show. Allison, what do you think about this? Yeah, I think that it's a perfect first time opera. It's a classic story and yet it's very modern and relatable and fresh. Um, and the tunes, so melodic, so recognizable. Brendan sings 
probably one of the most famous and important tenor arias ever written. And it is. To perfection. Tell us what it is. It's called Una Furtiva Lagrima. I just wanted to hear you say it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, and it's about Adina uh, finally coming to terms with her true feelings about knowing out that she's been repressing for so many years. I love this. Oh, I love this. So let's talk about uh, your character and your character. So Allison, um, your character in real life is pregnant. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and obviously um, on stage that will be covered up by a beautiful costume. Oh, yeah. Good. Opera could write that in. Sure. But what is she, what is she, what is she like? Adina is the, the wealthy, educated landowner, um, the only literate person in town. Oh um, and she's admired and respected because of that, especially by Nemorino. He even says, she can even read. Oh, I <laughs> and um, because of the difference in their stations in life, I think she has always had a very difficult time coming to terms with her feelings for him. Um, but then only when the threat of really losing him becomes present, she finally confesses the truth. She, yeah, okay, yeah. we won't give away what We won't give confesses. it away, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so Brandon, mm -hmm. Nemorino, sounds like he's not the sharpest tool in the shed. <laughs> He's not. He is not. Um, he's not educated. I guess he's a farmhand. He's, um, you know, he's, but he's always, you know, worked on her father's farm and just oh, love from afar. And, and it, I mean, not really that afar because she absolutely knows that he is in love with her. But, <laughs> um, but yeah, he's, um, I think he's a really honest, true character. And I think that's eventually what wins Adina over is just his honesty and his absolute love for her. I love this. Yeah. Oh boy, what it, you set it up so beautifully. I'm already picturing you in the fields and you over there and you know, stolen glances and all of that kind of that goes on. So this is a question for all of you, um, but I'm gonna start with Noel first. Mm -hmm. Why will audiences love this show? Why? Yeah. Well, it's got a little bit of everything in it. I mean, it's got the uh, wonderful, very endearing love story that's going on between these two characters that are sitting next to me. And then also it's got some incredibly wonderful commedia dell'arte comedy from uh, slapstick comedy. It's a little bit like, uh, oh, I don't know, Jerry Lewis even, you know. It, Love Jerry it's, Lewis. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's a little bit of a, uh, it's just a charming story. And you can't help but love it, and particularly when you hear the music. The music is so incredibly melodic and, and endearing and beautiful. It's just some of the most beautiful music that's ever been written. Mm -hmm. And it goes with a beautiful, endearing story. Yes. Is it set? What year is it set in? What, what year is this version well, set in? Well, we're setting this in the early 20th century okay. of, in Italy, in Italy. So, I mean, it could be set in any time, to okay. be honest. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Is this the first time the two of you have played these roles, Allison? I have covered this role twice, but I have always been the bridesmaid and never the bride. I've always been the sidekick, the friend, Janetta, and this is my first time actually performing yes. Adina, so I'm thrilled. Um, and Brendan and I have worked together one time in the past, but we played brother and sister that time, so we different kind of chemistry. Our relationship has different. evolved yeah. since then. <laughs> I love that. Brandon, is this your first time? Playing no, this, this is role? actually my this is my fourth time playing this role. Wow, how do you keep it fresh? Um, you know, I in you know in opera we do roles often. Yes, you know we I have reoccurring roles that I've done several times. Uh, I've found that life keeps it fresh. Like as I've grown up, as I've matured, as I've had life experiences, every time I come to a role, it's a little different. And not only vocally different, because you know voices change and yeah. we got to figure that out. And I'm fighting bad habits all over the place because I learned this when I was in college. <laughs> but but at the same time, a lot of it's uh, easier and a, a lot more relatable because I've you know had those life experiences now and can say, oh, this is, we actually had a moment last night, we were staging a section, and uh, 
I said, I, this is, this is his like growing up moment. I've, yes. I'd never realized that before, but this is where he takes that step into adulthood and he's now a grown up. I love that. Yeah. Because you're growing up. Cause I, I'm still growing we're up. Still, yeah. We're all still growing yeah. up. Um, Allison, is there any opera lingo I should know? Honestly, I think that everyone should know that you don't need to do any research or studying before you come to see this opera yes. or any opera. Yeah. You can show up and just read along with the titles and everything is right there for you. There's nothing that you need to know before. You just need to sit back and relax and enjoy this amazing love story unfold before you. Oh, I love that. Brandon, is opera for younger audiences? Will they Absolutely. get lost? Oh, you think, okay, yes. I absolutely think it's for younger audiences. I think um, uh, that's actually a big, what, I think opera needs to create more opportunities for young people to see this because um, it, anybody can relate to these stories and anybody can love this music. And I think it's a very important message we need to send out. Into the oh, community. I think so. I mean, I learned about opera off of records in my grandmother's living room. Absolutely. I mean, Dame Sutherland. And they, there was nothing for me to see except what I could imagine. Mm -hmm. So good answer. All right, Mr. Noel, who do we need to thank for all of this magical goodness? Well, all the people that are involved. There, we have a tremendous support team that uh, puts this together, but also uh, Key, uh, Key Bank is our sponsor for this, and so we're doing this uh, th thankfully because of Key Bank. So it's, I it's love great. That. So we've been showing the website below. Mm -hmm. Tickets are available. Get your tickets. Show up and see how the elixir of love turns out. Yeah. Thank you, all three of you, for being here today. Thank you. Thank Quite you. Thank fabulous. you. Fabulous. Thank you. When we come back uh, in the house, we will have with us, as I turn the page here, real quickly, ah, the Goodwill. They have a special surprise for you. You don't want to miss that. We'll be right back. <laughs>